Hi everyone, in this lesson we are going to take a quick tour of the Paint workspace. In order to keep it brief, we're going to move pretty fast and won't have time to stop and feed the animals as it were. But you should come away knowing where all the major components are in the workspace and how to get started. If you want to see the tools explained in depth, you can check out the Paint Tools playlist on the official 3D Coat YouTube channel. The first thing I want to do is pick the option that I want to work with, in this case, Paint UV Mapped Mesh per pixel. Alternatively, you can go to the File menu, Import, and choose which options you want to work with. If you go to New, you can bring the splash screen back up. So I'll click on that. And rather than using our little robot preset, I'm going to open one that already has some texture work. Alright, so we're going to start on the left hand side and you can see the tool panel is arrayed much like what you see in Photoshop. However, there are a few subtle differences and one of those is the lack of a pen tool and also your shape marquees. You don't see them in the tool panel, you'll find them in the E panel right here just above the tool panel. So when you hover over this area, you'll see the E panel appear. If you hit the E key, it'll come right to your cursor. So you can use that if you like. Also, your tool panel can come right to your cursor as well by hitting the space bar. So you can choose different colors very quickly or any of the tools here. The E panel is probably one of the most powerful elements in the entire application because you have so many different ways to apply paint or sculpting strokes. This also comes into play whenever you're in the retopple or in the UV room. You may want to use a freeform lasso or some other type of selection marquee to select multiple UV maps or vertices or polygons, whatever the case may be. All of these brush draw modes have some different and unique way that it responds to stylus pressure. When you hover over them, it will give you a tooltip that describes exactly how it is modulated by brush pressure. Okay, you have a paintbrush, pencil, airbrush, then you have a color operations tool. And let me click on that and you'll notice the tool options panel pops up. So some of these tools do not have any tool options in this this won't pop up. However, you may elect to dock this somewhere. It will stay intact unless you move it. So let's do a little bit of customization before I go any further. You have this 2D texture editor, which essentially brings 2D texture painting capability right inside the viewport. So you can work simultaneously in 3D or 2D and see the changes reflected on the fly. So you could choose to dock it maybe inside the column here and work this way. You could also dock it to where you can split the screen in 2D and have your tools in the middle. Another thing you could do is expand this column to be about half of your UI. And then what we can do is just drag and drop all of these asset panels. Actually, I'm going to bring that over here. And let's bring the tool options panel here. Brush options are just like brush dynamics inside Photoshop. Then you have brush alphas and strips. Also presets. Don't really have any for paint, but if you're in the Sculpt workspace, you may want to use that. Then you have your color palette. If you go to the upper right hand corner of each panel, you can bring up other options. So let's go to triangular, bar, round, quad, and then image allows you to select different images and you can choose between them here. So you can use this as a reference panel, but also as a color picker. All right, so let's take our 2D texture editor and drop that right there. And then maybe down here, put our surface materials. And 
paint objects. Now the Vox Tree Layer panel basically is just a hierarchy panel so that you can access objects that are in the Sculpt workspace. So I'll leave it like this for now, but let's go to strips. This is a lot like your brush alphas, but it repeats along a stroke. And then stencils is essentially as the name implies. It's just a mask overlay. You'll have a preview options panel here. You can scale it. You also happen to have a 2D gizmo that you can work with here if you don't want to constantly reach up here. So you can right click on that and left mouse click and drag to position it however you want. And you can use this for the 2D editor as well as 3D if you like. Let's click on another. You can scale it, rotate it. You can close it up here. You can again move it with these little widget handles. And then you can move the gizmo with this little widget. You can also tile it to where it's just one single instance. From camera, you have options for projecting from a camera, a cube mapping, and when you are using cube mapping, as you hover over the object, you can see a preview how it's going to be applied under your brush. But also, when you scale or make any kind of transform, you'll see a preview. Same thing goes for the options here in the preview options panel. So you got a couple different options for uh, stencil. You can invert it if you like. You can also distort it and then clear the distortion later on if you want. You can even paint over the overlay. You can reset the scale, flip it along the Y or the X axis. The color corrections allow you to adjust your stencil and then you can close it when you're done. This is very similar to how smart materials work. Again, if I want to use something like this brass smart material, I'll have very similar options here. And then I can bring up the smart material editor by clicking on that. And you'll see a, a large thumbnail. If you click on that, it should change from either a mid-size to a large size thumbnail. You can see how that changes here. cancel and then all of your channels are exposed here to where you can apply different maps into these individual channels and once again conditions exist here so this is a very important part this indicates where it's going to be applied on the surface do you want it to be applied more in the flat areas convex concave and so on and then you can save it as a new when you make changes and I would highly recommend doing that you can also change the mapping type. If you choose from camera, you're going to get a flat thumbnail image. And sometimes this is what you want. If you have a decal or a standard 2D image that you're wanting to project onto your model, this is what you would want to choose. Okay, so let's go back to cube mapping. You can also choose UV mapping as well. Cube mapping is the typical one that you'll use. And you can name your layers here. You have options for hiding the individual channels on the layer so that it's not taking up unnecessary amount of space. So when you hover in this area, that toggle will appear. And you can move your layers up and down. You can add a new layer. You can collapse ones that you don't necessarily need to see. And maybe this one, I just want to use color. And that's all that is exposed here. So I can delete a layer as well. You can reset it to its default. If you want to save that over the default one, then you would click save. But if you want to create a new copy with the changes, 
you would choose save as new so make sure to do that okay so we'll look at smart materials in another video in more depth let me move this out of the way and I want to point out that the current brush that I'm using color operations doesn't really apply any paint therefore I won't see a preview panel like I normally would if I were using the paintbrush or the fill tool now we have a preview window and we can scale it it's important to note that the preview window only displays the channels that are enabled for example if the color channel is all that's enabled then that's all you're going to see visible in the preview window I'm now going to click the create new layer icon the reason why I'm not seeing anything reflected in the preview window is because there's something wrong with my layers. In this case, I have the newly created one beneath the camo layer. So I need to go to the right hand side, click, hold and drag on the move icon, and drag it above the camo layer. Now you can see it. 